friends, good morning and welcome to The Secret Podcast on Service of Change Radio, where we challenge reality, question that which has been taught, and hope to inspire a new direction of thought and bring about change. I'm your host, Dennis Nappy II, on this Tuesday morning, July 28th, 2015, enjoying the warm weather again up here in the Poconos. Had a wonderful day with the family yesterday. As I said, we are uh, celebrating what we call Camp Nappy up here where we have our, our nieces and nephews come up and uh, and my cousin and spend about a week to play with my kids and uh, today we went on a hike and it was nice to get out and uh, and get out back to nature uh, and just to have the kids explore some of the spots that I used to explore as a kid able to unplug from the internet you know I saw a meme online today and it really got me thinking about exactly what we were doing today the one picture was a picture of a, a, it was a cartoon of a little boy riding his bike with a dog chasing him and it had these big smiles on their faces and, you know, the caption said, no Nintendo, no cell phones, no computer, no internet. And uh, the next picture showed a little boy with a dog and they, all it said was, I'm bored. And the, you know, the old date was like 1990 and you know, the other one said present day, 2015. So with all this technology, and you do see that a lot more kids are bored, they're just glued to the TV and the internet. I say go out, connect with nature, uh, you know, forget about everything and just enjoy being outside. I try to take advantage of that every day that I possibly can. So it's great. And you know, it's kind of neat too. I've been, uh, I guess this ties into my, uh, my Reiki practice and my, you know, my practice of Tai Chi, but I started going barefoot a lot this summer. I, before, I was never a fan of that before, but uh, I've noticed, you know, I guess since uh, practicing Tai Chi and then once I once I got my Reiki attunement, have become more sensitive to uh, subtle energies, and uh, and I feel a definite grounding when I'm uh, when I'm barefoot, especially when I'm walking outside. It, it definitely has a calming and relaxing effect on me. Uh, so uh, I've been going barefoot a lot more, and I and I definitely enjoy it. It's it's a nice way to go out and just kind of connect and relax. Something I think we should all be doing more of. Uh, you know, trying to be conscious of that. So something I wanted to talk about today. A couple things I want to get into, but uh, I saw a video uh, on Facebook. I, I swear, I wish I could just completely sometimes just disconnect from Facebook. I, I really do. Um, but it's one of the best ways for me to keep in contact with my readers and my listeners. There's just stuff I wish I didn't see, didn't get sucked into. And uh, someone had a video up and it said, this is the greatest video ever shown or ever made. So I'm thinking it's going to be positive. It's a bunch of people standing on the beach. So I, I click it and I'm watching it and I see these boats chasing a pod of whales, of small whales toward the beach. And I thought, oh my gosh, these whales are about to beach themselves and these boats are going to try to cut them off and scare them back out to the ocean. And then they get to the they get to shore and there had to be 500 people waiting on the beach and they go running into the water. I thought, wow, this is beautiful. They coordinated this effort with the boats and the people and they're scaring the whales so they go back and then all of a sudden the water starts turning red. I thought, wow, there are rocks there, are these whales getting cut. And then as they film it, these people were slaughtering the whales with sticks and knives. And as they're panning through this crowd of them murdering these creatures, there's young children, like 10 years old, jumping on the whales' backs, smiling as they're 
I'm not even going to get even more graphic, but it was, it really bothered me. Like, it really, really, really upset me. And I know I'm not a doom and gloom guy here, but I, you know, I still feel the need to express it. You know, I think we still need to address these darker sides of, of us. Um, I'm not sharing the link. I don't even know who put it up or, you know, what videos, what, what groups responsible for, for posting it. I don't want to spread that or share that. I, it's something I can't unsee. But, it, you know, I walked away from that this morning. I said, what hope do we have? You know, but it, 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 does, it just makes me think at times, you know, because I, sh- I struggle with this every day, you know, and, and I, I'm sorry for plugging it all the time, but it's such an important essay for me. You know, it, my book, my new book, I Am Human, and We Are Not Who We Think We Are, that initial essay that I wrote back in, I don't know, 2009, you know, like I said, some of that I think was inspired from uh, somewhere else other than just my own head, uh, just the connections that I made and the understanding that I had. It, you know, I struggle when I when I eat anything now. Um, you know, I have, a, I have a tough time even with plants, you know, and if, you, if you've listened to the podcast I did talking about the secret life of plants and the research that's come out of that documentary that's been replicated by the Mythbusters, that plants have a level of awareness uh, and a and a memory, um, and they you know and a, and a reaction to harm that has been done to them. So, with everything now, I feel like, you know, wow, this this is is tough for me, and I know there's a balance, and I, I try to find it all the time, um, you know. But in in the podcast I talked about with Robert Monroe and the production of Loosh Energy, how basically suffering and fear uh, produces helps to produce this energy that these parasites or whatever feed off of. And when I look at the earth, I, you know, when I look at our current situation, our current society, that's our design. You know, as I said in my initial essay, you know, many years ago, something has to suffer or die in order for us to live, whether it's a plant, whether it's an animal, you know, um, and I really, really struggle with this. And I, I, you know, and I, I, no, it's easy to laugh at me for that, you know, and most people say, hey, dude, it's food, it's the way it is, and 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 that's part of my problem with humanity is, you know, a lot of times we just say, well, that's just the way it is. Well, that's not good enough for me, you know? Things would never change if that was the excuse for everything. Oh, well, that's just the way it is, you know? Well, you know, we're facing our sixth mass extinction. Well, that's just the way it is. That's just human nature. Okay, well, then everything's going to die, and so are we. You, you understand? It's... We need to move out of that mindset and this and and face these things instead of just finding that comfort statement. You know, you, you got we got to face the fact that sometimes things are pretty bad, and that's okay when you're acknowledging that. Again, I'm not spreading fear. I'm not trying to spread doom and gloom. But I I do want to take pause to reflect on those things. You know, sometimes things are pretty bad, and we need to think about that and see ask ourselves, is there a better way? Um where we can be more sustainable, where we can even, you know, though at this point, based on our current design, our current situation, it seems like, well, something does have to die for us to live now. With advances in science, maybe someday we can invent some kind of food substance where we're not causing something to die or suffer. I get it. But, you know, maybe we can take pause and find a better way to prevent such, uh, you know, terrible slaughter and recognize that these creatures. I mean, whales are intelligent beings, you know, uh, they're very intelligent as are, you know, a lot of animals out there and, and the bear men, when anybody's ever had pets, they have feelings, they have emotions, they have intelligence, they understand, you know, and they, they can be afraid. And I look at it like this, anytime we cause something to have fear, we're contributing to the very things that are part of our own demise. So I try not to spread that fear. Again, some of this stuff is scary. I'm not trying to spread fear. I'm trying to spread awareness because once you start thinking about it and start paying attention to your own thoughts and your own emotional output, you can change it and you can starve these things. And that's that's one of my goals here. Um, or at least to get them to stop feasting off of us. But going back to my original thought, you know, when you look at those aspects of humanity, you know, I sometimes wonder what hope do we have? And I guess the whole point that I was trying to make was, 
you know, if you have an infestation of ants in your home, what do you do? Well, you find some way to kill them. You either, you know, find a way to destroy the nest or you start putting traps down to get rid of them in your home. Why? Because, well, they're going to eat your food. They're going to, you know, chew holes in your in your wall. They're going to get all over your stuff, and it's something that we don't want. It's a violation. It's, it's an invasion. But when I'm faced with those types of situations in my life where well, I have a quote-unquote pest that I need to get rid of, you know, of course, I always try to find a humane way to do it, but I always feel guilty about it because I think to myself, well, look at what humanity is doing to the planet and what if there is something bigger than us, which I believe that there is, you know, do I, do I want them to make that blanket decision based on all human beings? I mean, my children are, are beautiful people, you know, but if they were ants and they were living in an ant colony and their family was going out foraging for food and a big bad human came up and said, I don't want you in my house. They're not going to care. You know, so what makes us different? How can we, you know, make that change and make ourselves known that, Hey, we are trying to live better, trying to be peaceful, trying to be in balance and harmony. And I know some of it sounds new agey or, or, you know, like we're hugging trees, but in some aspects we are, and I'm not ashamed of it. So I don't know if I sound like I'm whining on this podcast or not, but this is this really affected me today uh, or yesterday when I watched that. So something, uh, just something to think about. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it too. So uh, hit me up on the on the Truth Seekers Facebook page, facebook.com slash truthseekers, T-R-U-T-H-S-E-I-K-E-R-S, or you can always hit me up on the Service of Change Facebook page or at serviceofchange.com. My email's down there as well. I'd love to hear from you. Love to hear your feedback. Uh, speaking of which, uh, you know, I've got to give a, a shout out and a big thank you to my friend uh, Ray Davis, a uh, very talented author. He's the author of Anunnaki Awakening and, uh, you know, still reading it, Ray. <laughs> I'm a slow reader, but, you know, um, enjoying the book. And Ray does a great job of uh, bringing the story of the Anunnaki from the Sumerian text and bring it into a modern day uh almost like a mystery investigative kind of story where, you know, the main character Maria Love is trying to understand all this stuff we truth seekers are trying to look into. So he takes an ancient story and finds, a, you know, as if this was coming into light in modern day, what it would be like. And it's, uh, you know, if disclosure was to happen, what's one way that it could happen? And Ray does a great job of adding so much information into that book. Um, but I want to thank him for, uh, I guess, the words of encouragement he offered me today, and I'd like to share some of that with all of you, Ray. I hope that you don't mind, my friend. But, you know, yesterday I talked about just sometimes looking around at the world and saying, why do I try to go down this road and understand this stuff and, and spend this time doing this? You know, it's a lonely path, and it's so easy to look at the world and say, yeah, right, I'm nuts. This is all in my head. None of this is true. Um, you know, and he offered me some encouraging some encouraging words, and he sent me a link um, about, I think it was about the, the, I'm trying to look on my Facebook page now. Um, <clears throat> forgive me. The Refusal of the Call. And, and uh, Ray, I'm going to quote you here for a minute, but he says, The allure of the ordinary world and an attempt to create doubt in the hero about his right to be the one to pursue his mission to pierce the veil. And he sent me a link called Refusal of the Call from ChangingMinds.org. And it resonated with me. Uh, you know, and the description says, uh, the hero hearing the call to adventure initially may hesitate, reluctant to leave the comfort and task of their everyday existence. Perhaps they are afraid of what might happen to them. Perhaps they do not see the call as important, being more engrossed in their current activity. Perhaps they have responsibilities and do not want to leave their family. The refusal may well be prompted by an individual such as with props interdiction, and there's links to that as well. Uh, and they give examples. Sherlock Holmes often refuses calls initially, seeing them as, as beneath his intellect until some fascinating detail awakens his interest. And in Star Wars, Luke's Uncle Owen reminds him of his responsibilities at home. You know, so it, it's saying that the hero often uh, tries to find ways to get out of it, you know, and, and I, th I, don't, I think that's a, a humbling thing, you know. Uh, the hero doesn't see himself as, as a hero. And I like to extend Ray's, uh, you know, kind words and advice to all of you out there that are listening to this podcast. You know, um, stay the course. It can be hard. It can be lonely. It can be dark, but it is of the utmost importance. Uh, we all have our small piece to bring to this to find more understanding. We know that there's something 
more, that there's something important. It's a burning desire within us to continue our search, to find that level of understanding what is the truth, what is reality, what is going on, and how do I fit into it? And we all have a different piece to bring to it, you know? So I I challenge all of you to continue to have these conversations. I hope that you can use this podcast as a starting off point and share the links with your friends, whether it's through the YouTube links or the Service to Change show notes that I have up, you know, um, or, or just share the link to Service of Change Radio, serviceofchange.com slash radio, where they can listen to this 24-7 between our Changecast and the, uh, the Seeker podcasts. Um, but let's make, these, let's make these discussions more public. You know, it was hard for me coming out of the closet. I still have a little bit difficulty doing it, in all honesty, because I, I still expect people to either ignore it or, you know, try to throw some, uh, some criticism my way. But I, in all honesty, I haven't received any negative criticism. I've received constructive criticism. I've been involved in debates with people, which has been healthy for all parties involved, but I haven't, I haven't been picked on or bullied in the way that I really expected to be. And I I think that's the fear. They don't want us to, to go out there and do that. You know, we need to make these conversations common where we don't have to give the, the disclaimer before we say it, you know, Oh, now I'm going to talk about something weird. Or I usually say, all right, I'm about to go off the deep end to brace people for it. I think they should be common because once it becomes a more commonly accepted discussion where people aren't afraid to talk about it, people won't be afraid to invest money into the research that is needed to uh, to continue this journey. So, Ray, you inspired me today, uh, and I hope that your you know your insight and wisdom can inspire those of those of us truth seekers that are out there trying to find answers. Don't give up. Let's network. Let's stay together. You know, let me know that you, what you're doing. Uh, maybe I can feature it on the show. Maybe I can feature it on the website. You know, let's let's have a voice and let's make this a common discussion. So that's all the time uh, that I have right now. But I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen, uh, you know, and support the show. Thank you very much. And again, thank you to my friend Ray for uh, for helping me out today. Check out his book, Anunnaki Awakening. You can see the links on the Truth Seekers page. You can see it at servicechange.com. Look for his, his change cast on there as well. Uh, and you can find his book on Amazon. Definitely well worth the investment to read his book. A lot of good uh, discussion points in there. So I'm Dennis Nappy the second. This is the Secret Podcast on Service of Change Radio, where small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. I encourage you to be the change. Never stop questioning and keep an open mind. Thank you. Seekers.